When we're managing users within UCS Director, you leverage a capability called role-based access control. And what role-based access control does is it's a method for controlling user access based on the user's role and their organization or locale. So the idea behind this is instead of being able to provide different uh, privileges directly to the user, you do it by the role. So the role is what defines how the user uh, can get access to different resources. The organization or locale is really a container that kind of sits on top of it. So it's a way to be able to create, you know, different um, you know, organizations within the, um, um, you know, your, your business uh, as a way to be able to kind of separate all of this stuff in a multi-tenant type of environment. So that's really where these t uh, things uh, would, would sit from a uh, hierarchy perspective. Now, again, the role is actually what defines user privileges, and then a user is assigned to a role or a locale, and that's what's going to allow you to be able to determine, you know, if this is, you know, if you've got Coke and Pepsi as two different customers, you know, if you're with Coke, you don't want to get access to Pepsi. Pepsi, that kind of thing. That would determine your locale. In addition, you also have the ability to be able to assign a user to a group. So the idea behind a group is that you can give specific privileges to that group that is in addition to what you would have with your role. You know, so it's a way to be able to create a hierarchy where you can actually drive a lot of customization to how the user can, can operate within UCS Director. And then again, individuals, individuals are not assigned privileges directly. It's only to roles. And that's a key component. So so when you look at or looking at things on the test, make sure that's something you absolutely understand. There's a ton of questions, uh, more than likely you will see on our back because it is something that is a core component of it. You also uh, want to make sure that you understand that the user will only be able to access a resource if their role and or their group allows for it. So that's something that you know is a, a core uh, aspect of ensuring that you only get access to what you need and all of those privileges will be applied to that user's role or to the group that they're part of. So let's dig down a little bit more into it. So the user roles that you're seeing in UCS Director, there's a number of default roles um, that, that are already in place. There's basically 48 roles that are included as part of you know, the, uh, the maximum uh, set of roles that be, would be uh, available there. Within UCS Director, there's 11 default roles, though. These are the ones that are going to be pre-configured and ready to go out of the box. Um, but again, you've got up to 48 that you can create. So if you've got some real custom um, workflows or custom you know, uh, uh, operational models that you're trying to, to get UCS Director to fit into, you've got the ability to be able to drive that with these uh, additional customizable roles. But the default roles you're going to have in there, uh, the first one is the All Policy Admin. This is designed to be able to be an administrator user that's going to be able to drive a lot of the, uh, the core functionality. So you're going to have you know, that particular uh, user is going to be able to to drive um, you know, all of the configuration in the, uh, um, you know, in the system itself. You've got a billing admin, uh, computing admin. You know, so the billing admin would only have access to be able to run reports and to be able to ensure you know, the, the billing function is working properly. So you know, that particular uh, individual would be you know, assigned to ensuring that chargeback was, was happening the way it should. Uh, somebody that's focused on compute, so you could have a computing admin, which would be responsible for, for the, uh, um, you know, the physical and virtual computing environment. Uh, infrastructure, you know, IS admin, which would be an application IM uh, uh, admin. Lots of different ways you can you can drive this. A um, couple of uh, of these different uh, ad, you know uh, predefined ones that you want to be uh, aware of is the concept of the group admin. So the group admin is an end user that has the privileges of adding other users. You know, so the idea would be you know if you want to have a line of business, that line of business has certain autonomy to be able to add their own users. Um, you would have the ability to be able to create a group admin that could then create those uh, those users. So be on the lookout for questions that are tied towards those types of things. In addition, you also have the service end user, and this is a user that can view and use the self-service portal. So this particular um, you know, end user is one that's uh, you know, going to be sort of like the, um, you know, just the individual worker within the organization. There's certain resources they may want to use, but again, don't confuse this particular end user or the self-service portal with Prime Services Catalog. This is talking about the end uh, or the, uh, the portal that's within UCS Director, which is typically not going to be exposed to everyone in the organization. RBAC privileges, there's a ton of different things that you can do within UCS Director, but ultimately it's important to understand what you're able to see and do 
is all based on the privileges that are assigned to your role. So when you look at some of the capabilities, you know, all the different things you're gonna see on that menu bar is all gonna be uh, dependent upon what is selected and what is assigned to you in your role. You know, so if, you, if you're not an administrator, you don't have access to that, you would not even see that on that bar. And that's ultimately something you would then configure within the, uh, uh, the actual solution itself. So within UCS Director, all those different menu settings are then att attributed to your user role. And that's configured here as you're actually defining the role itself. So there on the right, you can see all of the different uh, uh, menu items and submenu items. So you can click and, and add these different ones. Uh, based on the default roles, the 11 that are built in there, you know, there's a different combination of these menu items based on what that particular uh, uh, user role would, would need to be able to accomplish. But understand that you can customize it all from here. Um, it's also important to understand that the system administration menu is only going to be accessible to a role type of admin. That's a big one. You want to make sure you understand that part of it. You may see questions like that. You also, um, from a permissions perspective, they can be customized per role. So there on the right, you're seeing the actual default permissions that are built in there. But again, I've got that ability to be able to customize it. And there's a number of different things that you can do. You can set read, read you can set write, or you can set read, write. So what's the difference between these? Read is designed so that that particular user can only read or view a setting in the actual system. So it's called a file is what, you know, from the documentation. So that's why you're seeing that there. So you can only read, view a file, which is ultimately a setting. Uh, why am I doing it this way? Because you may see it like that on the test. In addition, when you talk about uh, write, that's the capability to be able to read the actual information as well as to be able to write, modify, delete, and rename a file or a setting in this case. And then the read-write uh, access means you can read or write to a file. It means you can do both. Uh, and this also gives you the ability to be able to, uh, you know, to do a number of other different uh, uh, things as well. So pretty much it gives you full access to that particular uh, setting within, uh, within uh, UCS Director. So there's a number of default roles and permissions in the solution itself. Um, so if we go into UCS Director, you know, you're going to have a number of different combinations. Um, so there's a, you know, for each one of those 11 that we talked about, um, there's a bunch of different combinations here. So uh, without having to go through all of this, I just want to be able to point you to the UCS Director documentation. The administration guide walks through all of these in great detail. So you can see what the default uh, privileges are based on the role that you may want to choose. So up there at the top, you'll see the actual role name, and then you'll have the different pr uh, privileges that are, that are configured you know, by default so that you can get an idea of how that particular user, you know, what they would be able to do if they were given that role. Recording? So in this demonstration, we're going to show how to add a role into UCS Director. So first thing we need to do is go to System, and then from the System tab, we'll then move over to User Roles. And you'll see this list, uh, basically this includes all of the current roles that are in the system. And you'll notice here that all of these are default roles. Um, it gives you the role type as well as the name associated with each. The details on this can be found in the documentation and what each does. So we'll go ahead and add a new role. And we'll type in a name here. So here we're going to type in the name Cloud Master. And then the role type could be admin or end user. We're going to go ahead and leave it as admin. And then we're going to give it a quick description. Master of all clouds. Then we'll select next. And then we're going to go ahead and add menu items. So these menu items are going to determine what it is that the user sees when they actually uh, connect up to the interface. And there's a number of different items here as, you, as you're seeing. Um, each one of these adds different capabilities. So we know this is an administrator, so we're going to give them all the, uh, give them all the administrator access, as well as CloudSense for doing reporting and things like that. We're going to give them the ability to be able to modify physical infrastructure policies. Um, you know, we could select other items here, but we're not going to choose those. So those are ones that we will not have the ability to be able to see. And as you can see from the policy section, it's not, you know, everything is not selected. So you're seeing a different icon there. Now, if we had selected all of them, you would see that that would just be a check mark. So we'll give them physical access. Uh, we're not going to give them the ability to be able to change organizational uh, components. We'll give them home access and then support to be able to, to configure virtual items.
So these are just gonna show you the menu items that the end user would see when they connect to the interface. So next, we're actually gonna apply user permissions. So the user permissions determine whether or not the individual has the ability to be able to do things. So here, if I wanted to select all access, I could have done that very easily. That would give them read-write privileges to everything. Um, or I can be very specific. So in the case of physical computing, I can give them access to read and write those types of, uh, of uh, parameters. Or maybe only give them write access to assign a VM to a virtual da uh, data center. Uh, or only read access to be able to view network uh, virtual network parameters. Um, you know, or read access for virtual storage. This allows me to be very uh, specific and prescriptive in how I allow the user to be able to work through this. Uh, so there's a number of uh, different components we could, uh, we could select here. You know, as you can see, there's a lot of different items. Uh, one of the easy ways that you can go through and, and actually find it is to use the search tab. You know, so if I wanted to be able to do a quick search on anything to do with compute, I can just type in COM and it's going to give me all of the components that we part of, you know, selecting uh, privileges for compute. So when I'm finished, I hit submit and now that user is added successfully. And we can see there that Cloud Master has been added. It's not a default role, it's a custom role. So it's showing there that it, no, that is not a default role. And that's how you would add a new role into UCS Director.